friends, welcome back to Food Prep Guide. Today's video I'm excited about because it's something I'm passionate about and that is meal planning. We have had several of you reach out to us asking about how to get started with meal planning. Maybe it's something you've always wanted to do. You feel like it would provide some peace and calm and efficiency to your life if you were to be able to meal plan, but you haven't really known where to start. Maybe you've tried before and weren't able to stick with it for one reason or another. So if that's you, this video is for you. What we're going to do is focus mostly on getting started because sometimes that's the hardest part, right? It's just starting because we don't know where to start. And if you don't know where to start, how can you start? So I want to focus on basically the four um, overarching points of meal planning and kind of how I use those four things to walk me through the process. Now, we have a very detailed breakdown on how we meal plan once a month. We go into details on all of our systems and all of that, all the tools that we use for that, and that is inside of our food prep guide book. If you're interested, that will be linked in the description box below. So today, I'm gonna give you just a, an overview of those four steps that I generally walk through as we meal plan, okay? Let's get started. Welcome to Food Prep Guide. My name is Jordan. I'm a homeschooling mom to three, living on three beautiful acres with my wonderful husband. A health crisis forced our family to change the way we think about food. Unfortunately, it also put us in financial hardship. Thankfully, the solution to both challenges was the same, to live off the land as much as possible. For us, that means growing a garden, preserving the harvest, raising chickens, and cooking from scratch. It's definitely a family affair. And friends, too. Meet Stacy, researcher, author, and lifelong learner. She entered the world of food preservation in the crazy days of 2020. She joined a gleaning co-op, and a local grocer offered her clearance produce in bulk. And so the adventure began. Together, we're reclaiming the old ways of food stewardship and teaching them to the next generation. If there's one thing you should know about us, it's that we love Jesus and seek to steward his blessings wisely. Our table always has room for one more. So y'all come join us. Okay, step one, all you're gonna start with is a notebook and a pen. So the very first thing you're going to do is list out your family's favorite meals. One uh, thing that I see people do that ends up hurting them is they will jump onto Pinterest and try to find all these amazing recipes or all of these amazing meal prepping type recipes and they haven't made them before and so they're starting with something new that they're unfamiliar with and they're having to learn that recipe or learn that meal prep process before they can even really do the planning. Um, so I highly recommend not doing that, not starting with brand new recipes. First, get your notebook, get your pen, and just write down what your family already loves to eat. We all have those recipes that we go to time and time again, and they may not even be really recipes, but just two, three, four ingredient things tossed together and enjoyed by everyone in your family. Those are the things that you're gonna start with. Go ahead and write those down. Step number two is to look through that list and categorize them into theme days. So a lot of times, meals will share something in common, whether it be a certain type of ingredient, whether it be a certain type of cuisine variety, um, or even whether it be a certain type of device used, like a crock pot or an Instapot or your stovetop. Go ahead and see what those recipes have in common and highlight those into theme days. So for instance, if your family loves chicken and dumplings and they also love chili, you might wanna have a soup day. Go ahead and write that down. After you've got your list, come over here, either in a column over here or underneath here and start writing um, themes. So you could write soup. If your family really enjoys uh, chicken Alfredo with broccoli, and they also like a hamburger helper type variety. That's pasta, right? So another thing you could write is pasta. Let's say your family loves your slow cooker barbecue chicken and your slow cooker Italian chicken. You can have a slow cooker day or you can have a chicken day. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You can do it by proteins, cooking device, like I said, um, uh, theme, like uh, cuisine, like Tex-Mex, Italian, um, that kind of thing. So go ahead and organize those into theme days. 
Step three is going to be to integrate those theme days once you've decided on what they are. You wanna aim for at least seven, by the way, just because there's seven days in a week. And that's gonna help you get your, it's gonna help you systematize what it, your, the future step that we're gonna be talking about a whole lot easier if you limit it down to seven. If you have more than seven, try to combine them like a crock pot and a chicken or um, a Mexican and a, a, and a rice. You know, Try to combine them to where you have seven theme days. Once you have those theme days, you want to incorporate those theme days into your meal plan calendar or just piece of paper, whatever you use, whatever you're going to be using to plan out your meals. You want to integrate those themed categories into both that calendar and your recipe box or binder, whatever you use to store your recipes in you're gonna to wanna to match those things up to your theme days. Now, this is obviously just one way to meal plan, okay? I'm not trying to say this is the only right way to do it. If you don't do it this way, you're gonna fail. Absolutely not. I just, I'm sharing what has worked for me for years to put meal planning almost on autopilot and it doesn't take up so much time and so much brain space anymore. And our meals just run so much smoother. Um, so I use this kind of Rolodex type. It used to be our Bible scripture memory box, um, but this is, kind of what I have turned to over the years. I've done it all sorts of ways, and this is the way that I have um, decided is the absolute best way for my brain, the way my brain works, do whatever works for you. But let's say we have a chicken night. Uh, so I have a chicken tab. We have a crock pot night. I have a crock pot tab. We have a rice night. So I have a rice tab. You can kind of get the picture. Um, and then we, ooh, that was kind of loud. Sorry about that. Then we, when I mentioned your monthly calendar or your piece of paper, whatever it is that you want to use, go ahead and break up your theme days onto like write them out onto your calendar. This is just a printable that I have created. We have um, this was actually available in our shop. I think it's called the monthly meal plan calendar. And so that will be linked below if you want this exact type calendar. But you can see I have on Tuesday, Tex-Mex, Wednesday, soup, Thursday, beef, Friday breakfast or pizza, Saturdays are meal in a jar, Sundays are freezers. And I actually, since I meal plan monthly, I didn't want to repeat the exact same categories the entire month. So what I did was I actually added in a couple more, just only like two or three more. Um, so for instance, we have a pasta night and let's see, oh yeah, and a rice night. Um, but whatever your categories are and whatever way you want to do your planning, just try to categorize your meals into those theme days. Once you have done that, it's just a matter of starting to plug in your recipes. Still, again, start with your family's favorites. Before you start moving into a bunch of recipes that you don't make a whole lot, or that new Pinterest one that just looks gorgeous, start with their family's favorites first because you just don't have to spend time learning a new recipe. You can just get right into the planning. So when I get to the point of just plugging in recipes, I will have my calendar here, which, which let's pretend it's empty. I don't want to empty it because it's actually our monthly meal plan for this month, um, but pretend it's blank. And you're, let's say our family, one of our favorite family meals is tacos. I think I already talked about that. We are a taco loving family. So let's say that's on my list. We have a taco Tuesday night. So on Tuesday, I'm gonna write in tacos. That's actually what we're having tonight on Tuesday, tacos. Um, and, and then on my notebook, I'm gonna write down everything that I need for those tacos. Now, normally you're gonna have some ingredients on hand already. So you'll kinda, it kinda helps to go ahead and do a quick uh, walk around your kitchen or your pantry area, your, your fridge and your freezer before you sit down and do this so that you can have an idea of what you already have on hand and don't need to buy at the grocery store. So for instance, I know for sure I have rice, beans, and pasta. Um, I probably, I'm gonna need some avocados and some uh, tortillas probably. And then I have everything else on hand. So as soon as I write down tacos on this calendar, I come to my list and I write down avocados and tortillas because that's all I need to make our tacos. And you just rinse and repeat for all of your family's favorite recipes. If you were able to get about seven family favorites, I do recommend trying to get seven because at that point you at least have a full week already 
filled out and it just feels like a little victory and it's motivating and encouraging and it kind of can keep you uh, motivated to go on with the rest of the month. But you obviously, you certainly don't have to start out going full blown once a month. Just start out with once a week. And if you come across, if you have seven meals that are your absolute family favorites, you already have your weekly meal plan, your first weekly meal plan done for you. So start with those and then start plugging things in. If I don't have family favorites, will not fill up all 30 days on my once monthly plan. That's when I come to my little Rolodex here and I will just start picking out recipes that are match up the card to the category on the calendar. And that is the four just general overview steps that I work through to meal plan once a month. But remember, if you need to start small, start with just one week of meals. I hope these tips helped you. I feel like I talked super fast. I hope I need to slow down, take a breath. <laughs> I don't know why. I think when I get excited about something, I'm passionate about meal planning. I just talk and talk and talk and talk super fast. So sorry if it's a little slow. I think YouTube has those little options to like either double speed, but you can also slow speed. So maybe you need to slow speed a little bit if I talk too fast. <laughs> okay, y'all. I hope that was helpful to you. And that is all for today. We will see you next time. Bye.